We got Emily Whitmire back here on the program who's going to be fighting February 17th at UFC on ESPN. Emily, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I'm getting you around noon. Uh, did you have training this morning? What, what have you been up to today? Uh, I just went running this morning, and then tonight I'll go spar. I was at your last fight. That was a pretty good win. Uh, you get that uh, victory over Jamie Moyle. Um, it's, we're talking about a fight here in February, though. Did you want this much time off, or what's the reason for the layoff? Absolutely not. So layoff, I think that just came to you know scheduling, and I don't really know why I got pushed back so far. But I mean, it was supposed to be January, and then it got pushed to February, and I did get offered something short notice, uh, but I wasn't able to you know make the weight on. It was like two and a half weeks notice, so there was that. So I was really hoping for a full camp, and then for me to get a full or a full camp, I had to be pushed back this far, I guess. So I uh, just you know waiting, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, for sure. And, and that was a huge win, obviously, your first UFC victory. And I'm sure a weight lifted off your shoulders. But that win got a little bit overshadowed because I know uh, with the whole thing with you and Vinny Magalesh, is that all good now or is that still kind of, eh, that wasn't very cool of him? Um, we joke around at the gym now, like if I see him or something, he apologized to me the next day and we just kind of like, you know, brushed off. I got the win. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're still teammates and I see him at the gym we're cordial and everything, but I, I have a, you know, a little, I have a memory, so it's, you know, on the back burner. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear you. Uh, he's, he's not going to be taking you out to dinner anytime soon. Let's put it that way. Definitely, right? Definitely. So, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I know who will though. Uh, Johnny Case, uh, your boyfriend. I think that's so cool. You know, I follow both you on social social media and I know some big news you guys moved in together um I, I know obviously Johnny's with Ryzen now um how has that been just you know being able to live together because I know before he was commuting back and forth from Phoenix yeah the commute was definitely getting hard and it just kind of came point where it's like either we're gonna you know do that we're gonna have to you know do it because we were spending so much time driving back and forth and you know he's just an amazing guy he's so sweet and we get along so well and we have so much fun and just be able to train together and you know share more of our life together is awesome and you know we have found this house it got posted like two hours but like after we found it and uh it's like right next to Extreme Couture, right next to the PI. And so it just was kind of like, now's our chance. Like, let's just try. And we tried and we got the house. And so we just, you know, we're carefree kids moving in together. <laughs> that, no, that's good. Um, I, I, in some ways, just as a guy, I feel like getting, you know, moving in together is almost as big as marriage just because you, you know, yeah. you're with each other 24 seven. How's that going? Any habits get on, and, on your nerves or anything? How, how has he been to live with? No, absolutely not. Johnny, he's seriously the sweetest guy. Like, I could not believe he was single when I met him. I was, like, so amazed by it just because he is so sweet and he's just, you know, everything about him, like, helping, like, cook, clean, whatever. More cleaning because I do all the cooking. But <laughs> Yes, fair enough. Um, okay. Yeah, so we just were, we get along really well. We mesh well. And so living together, it really hasn't been like a big strain or a change on our relationship at all. If anything, it's just better because now we don't have to spend time apart. That's great. Um, and I heard Lauren Murphy was the one who kind of linked you guys up, right? Is that how that happened? Yeah. So I actually went to the last UFC in Phoenix um, in Glendale, and that was last April. And so I almost didn't even go, but me and Lauren had been planning on going because Matt Lopez and Justin Gaethje were fighting our coaches from the Ultimate Fighter. And so uh, I went out there and we went to an after party after and uh, she ended up introducing us. And like right away, it was just like sparks flying on, you know, the dance floor. Like we just were hanging out the whole night and we, you know, wrestled around and we just couldn't be apart after that. And so it was literally like seven months of both of us driving back and forth. And so, you know, it was nice to finally make that move. And, and last thing on that, I mean, how much does that help your fight career? Just, you know, being with someone that's also a fighter that, that gets the weight cuts, that gets the days when you're, you're going to have a rough day in the gym. Like, like I'm sure that's helped your, your career in some ways. Yeah, it's awesome. Just like feeling his love and, you know, support is like helped a lot. Um, he was, we had met right uh, before the Jamie Moyle fight. And I definitely think having that love, like going into that and like just feeling like really appreciated, like really helped like mentally. The weight cut though is a little difficult because we've been on like opposite schedules. So he'll get done fighting and then like I'll go into camp. And so then like one's wanting to be fat and eat everything and then the other one's having to die. <laughs> right. So it's so, tough. Yeah. Yeah. That is the downside. Right yeah. Now, but I'm really excited to eat with him here in a few weeks. Alexandra Albu, that's who you're fighting. 3-0 record. Uh, what, what do you know about her? Were you a little bit surprised to get this fight? Because she's kind of been off the radar just because she hasn't fought that much. 
You know, it's funny. Uh, I didn't know who she was. And then actually her name uh, was brought up in the Ultimate Fighter house because Kylan was fighting her and uh, Rachel and Kylan are good friends. And I had found out who she was then. And then she, of course, you know, fights, has a big layoff and then fights and has a big layoff. And so uh, I don't really like know that much about her personally. I just watched her fights that were available on Fight Pass and I just kind of, you know, know what to expect. I know she likes to come out hard in that first round. And I know kind of everything she throws is with like all explosiveness she's a powerful girl but I definitely think uh I kind of think Kylan won that fight to be honest and so I definitely think there's some technical flaws and I'm gonna be the one to expose them she the last time she fought was July 2017 she's only fought twice since 2014 like do you feel like the activity the fact that you've been more active uh, will, will play a role especially when you were on tough because you had to fight so often yeah, I think just overall experience, like I know my pro record's not that big, but I had 10 amateur fights and then my ultimate fighter experience. So this will be my 18th fight. And so, you know, I know the UFC was saying she was like 7-0 and or something like that, but there's no like fight records or proof or of that anywhere. And so uh, just for her to only have those three fights in that amount of time, I think overall just cage experience is going to like play a big factor because I know I'm coming out to fight and I'm getting this win. There's no way I'm going to... I can't be one of those people, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Like, I'm here to make my stamp, you know. I'm 27 years old. I've been putting my whole life towards this, you know, the last five years that I've been in Vegas. And, you know, now's my chance to shine. She does have a little bit of a hype around her. And so I definitely think this is going to be a good way to keep that ball rolling. And I thought with Jamie, I thought I would maybe get a little bit more, you know, respect from that win. But I don't really feel like I've gotten it. And so I definitely think this will be my win to, you know, get that that I think I deserve. Yeah, and, and fighting at the right weight class as well, because, you know, I think people forget you were up a weight class. And, you know, you fought for RFA before you went on The Ultimate Fighter. Like, that was a good experience, yep. too. So that was actually the first time we did our interview, which is uh, seems like ages ago, but it right? wasn't that long. So it's uh, time. Was it 2015 or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, no, yeah. I remember it was right when you, you had that thing with, I remember I was just thinking of that interview because I remember you and Misha saved that girl. You guys were on the mountain. Remember that? Yeah. 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 So there you so go. Wow. Blast from the past. Um, <laughs> how, how is the cut going to 115? Uh, you know, this fight's in a couple weeks. Um, the cut's been going good. Just same old. Uh, it does suck dieting a little bit when you already, I already eat a pretty good diet. I don't really eat out ever and I'm kind of a head case about it. And so when you already have a really clean diet and then you have to start like really calorie restricting, that's kind of a little bit difficult, but the weight does come off pretty good. So I just have to, I eat a good, you know, dinner, but then later in the night I do get a little bit hungry. So it's just kind of going to bed hungry it just sucks, but almost done. It's almost there. And after the weight cut, I'm always like, oh, okay, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> One of the luxuries you have is training in Vegas at Extreme, and you get a lot of fighters coming in using the PI. Uh, who have you been able to train with for this camp? Um, you know, my partners have actually kind of been the same. I've done some training with Claudia uh, Gedalia, and then Bryce Harley, and then Trent Phillips, and kind of just like my main people that I've had um, at Extreme. There was actually a girl, Claire Lopez. She's from Paris. Um, she's an upcoming up and comer, fifteen, and it was kind of weird because she looks exactly like my opponent like the same build everything yeah and she was here for two weeks and so I was able to get some good training with her and so uh it was weird my coach Dennis when he saw her he's like oh my god she's perfect it was so funny how excited she was he was about like how perfect her body type was to match up and a similar style too kind of really explosive like so that like big leaping hook and so I got some good training and good look from her um, Dennis Davis, Eric Nixick, and then Johnny will be in my corner this nice. time. Nice. Okay. That's yeah. a good boost. That, that'll be good. Out with all my guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, stick with the crew that, that gets you there. Um, how do you see this fight playing out on the 17th? Um, I definitely see a finish. So I've, you know, been working really hard and I think we have a good game plan. And so I think if I stick with the game plan and just go out there and perform like I know I can and keep my mind sound, I think I'll definitely get a finish this fight. And you mentioned how, you know, the, the goal is to get the finish, make a statement in this fight, let people know, hey, I'm here to stay. Like you said, you don't want to be, uh, you know, inconsistent. Uh, where do you feel like a win puts you? Because she is undefeated, so I'm sure that would look good on the resume. Um, yeah, I just hope that I get, you know, another good ranked opponent. I actually think that she's ranked a little bit below me. Um, and so then it would be nice to get somebody ranked, you know, a couple ranks ahead of me. So then I can just kind of keep climbing that record and just taking fights as they come. Excellent. Uh, downtime. What, what are you guys uh, doing? You mentioned you don't go out to eat. I mean, it's expensive in Vegas. I know I've been there yeah. you know, a couple of times. Uh, are you guys watching Netflix? Like how does that work uh, in terms of downtime? 
Yeah, downtime was kind of just spent at the house. We really love our house. And so if we can be here, we definitely try and be here. We've definitely made it as comfortable and as homey as possible. And so I'm a homebody. I don't really like you got your dog too. I forgot that. Uh, you're, you're, I've seen the photos of him. He's beautiful. Oh yeah. He's laying right here next to me. <laughs> so that's another big thing is like, I always want to spend as much time with Bruce as I possibly can. And so if I'm not at the gym or having to work, then I definitely want to be at home spending time with him. It's not as fun to go out and stuff. Like when you've worked in a restaurant for so long, because you kind of like analyze everything like you're working and you kind of feel like you're working. And so it just kind of, it's just not as fun. And so I just don't, really like going out and eating. <laughs> yeah, no. And it, like you said, like I was saying too, in Vegas, it's so pricey. Like I, yeah, it's, I, I, I could imagine like, it's not even worth it. Cause you're just like, I can't even enjoy my food cause it's so expensive. So yeah, they have like some places that are off strip that are pretty good. And like the prices are a lot better and stuff, but definitely if you go down on the strip, like be prepared to like spend a good buck on, you know, and I, again, like, I don't really like eating like out, like I'm a head case about like the chemicals and like the way they like do the food. And I've worked in restaurants and so i see the stuff that goes yeah on it's not like you're just making it's, this up yeah it, yeah it's, it, it's not like it's like horrible or anything but it does you know i'm like i don't want that person touching my food or i don't want you know them cutting it on that cutting board and i i like cooking so like out of camp like i like you know getting like big roast or steaks and you know trying to like make a good meal well, I'll tell you what, we're going to get our money's worth coming up here February 17th. It is UFC on ESPN1. Uh, Emily, it's always good catching up with you. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. Perfect. Uh, my Instagram and my Twitter are mwhitmire115. And then sponsor-wise, I'd really like to thank Green Life Production. They have supported me throughout this whole camp and always, you know, give me the best stuff to smoke. And they're just an awesome company to support in general. And then just Johnny, my coaches, Extreme Couture, everybody, Bruce here, big lazy dog. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone that's just always supported me and all my training partners.